Hello! Sorry about not having a video last week. Uh, it was my birthday, so I was not in for most of the week last week since it was in the middle of the week um, that my birthday occurred. Um, and then before that, work was too busy to possibly fit in filming a video. Um, anyway, long story short, let's get to today's lesson. Today we're going to be talking about how to write other cultures that aren't your own. And, subtopic, what is the difference between cultural appreciation and cultural appropriation? Um, those actually are two different things. Uh, I know a lot of people are like, oh well, how can I write cultural diversity if I'm just a culturally appropriating? Well, that's not true. Um, it's about how you do it. So cultural appreciation is when you seek to learn more about a culture and seek to better understand it. So that means the whole time you're writing this character that's of a different culture, you're seeking to understand it. You're always seeking for answers. You're never assuming that you're the authority on anything. Um, however, with the way it becomes cultural appropriation is once you assume that authority role. Um, cultural appreciation keeps you in the role, um, I actually found this on an article that said, keeps you in the role of student, whereas cultural appropriation puts you in the role of master, self-proclaimed. Um, once you proclaim yourself, hey, I'm the master of this culture, I know everything there is to know about that culture, you have officially started culturally appropriating because you're assuming you know everything even though you don't live as part of that culture and it's not a part of your life. Um, but if you want to have cultural diversity, cultural diversity is encouraged and welcome into society. It is absolutely an important thing to include in your books. Uh, we have such a rich, diverse, beautiful world. Why not include it? Just make sure that you stay in the appreciation, cultural appreciation side of things, assuming you don't know everything, rather than assuming you know everything. And just assuming that the X, Y, and Z is going to happen. Assuming that this is the way things work. Instead, assume that you don't know what's going on. All right, so next tip, aside from identifying whether you're uh, appreciating or appropriating, is to make sure to do lots of research. As I was just saying with cultural appreciation, you need to make sure you're always learning and always open to new answers. Make sure that you do lots of research, not only in the culture, but about how it affects their way they live, how it affects their um, living in the society they live, whether that's another country or America, um, it is going to affect and it is going to be differently depending on which country they're in. You know, if there's a country where there's a high, um, highly intense Catholic culture, then that's probably going to be normal if you're Catholic. Um, but if you're living somewhere else where it's a highly intense, um, uh, I don't know, Wiccan culture, then you're going to probably feel a little out of place and society is going to look at you a little differently. Um, so it's important to make sure that any culture or religion that you are discussing, because religion can be a part of culture 100%, is not something that you are um, assuming you know everything about. Assume you don't have any of the answers and are always looking for the answers. Um, do your research and always keep up to date too. I would say if you are writing a novel, um, do redo your research at least once. Um, every time you write a novel. So for book one, do research. For book two, do research. For book three, do research. And even if it's the same research, because things can change over time as to what the culture is in the society. Um, I mean, heck, like 2020, masks became a part of everyday American living culture, right? Whereas for Japan, um, on days when there was high r reports of highly intense uh, pollution, they would already wear masks. That was already a part of their culture. Um, so that's just a brief example of something small that can be affected even just on a yearly basis. So it's important to continue to look into changes that are being made. All right, next is identify any biases or stereotypes that you have or that exist. Um, make sure that you look up how to portray them without these biases and stereotypes because a lot of the biases and stereotypes stem from an idea of truth that then was taken to a place that isn't truth. Um, so make sure that you do research on, hey, there's this bias or this stereotype that I have or that other people have. How do I make sure that I do not fall into that pit? Next thing that you should do is read books from that, main, um, from that culture, specifically of ones where they are that main character and biographies from people of that culture and um, now we have such a diverse selection of books, you can totally be like, hey, I'm writing about a um, character who is 
um, Hindi, I'm going to read a whole bunch of books with main characters who are Hindi. I would absolutely encourage that. That is going to influence your writing greatly and it's going to really help that. Um, you also want to analyze what is your reason for writing about the other culture. If it's to be popular and trendy, don't do it. That people will be able to feel when you're doing it just for to be popular and trend. And people would rather have an all white cast <laughs> or an all black cast or an all any other ethnicity that's all anything cast um, and have them be authentic than have them all feel like they are just doing it to be popular. You can tell the difference when someone's being a no cultural, doing it for popularity versus cultural appreciation. Um, if you're trying to do it to promote diversity and to explore other diverse cultures in your novel and to give more representation, that's good. Then you should keep going and include that in your novel. Um, next thing is having an understanding and empathy for other cultures. Um, even if we don't fully understand it because we haven't lived that culture, do your best to try to understand it. Try to look at it from their point of view. Try to see it from the way they see it. Try to go, oh, hey, I may not have that in my life, but I have this which is similar and this that I can relate to to help myself understand their culture better. Um, another thing that you should do is treat characters as people, not as a way to convey culture. Now, this kind of goes back to the stereotypes and biases because a lot of times characters will, who are culturally diverse in the, of a part of the culture that the writer doesn't know about, um, they tend to fall into stereotypes accidentally, purely because of the fact that they're trying so hard to portray them accurately as part of this culture that they're actually pushing the culture more than they are the character. The character is a result of the culture and of what they grew and the way they grew up, not the other way around. The culture doesn't create the character. The character already was a person. This culture just shaped them and who they are and how they believe. That doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be perfectly part of this culture. You can have people who are diversely different from the culture. You can have people who believe firmly in the culture. You can have people who are like, hey, my mom believes in this culture super firmly, but I'm not sure that I super am on board with that. Um, that is really important to show different perspectives because there are going to be drastically different perspectives. I know that I read a biography once about um, from the perspective, it was an autobiography from the perspective of a, um, I believe it was Chinese woman growing up in America and her mom was very classically Chinese and was like, you do X, Y, and Z as a woman. And she was like, you know, even though I was born in this culture and this Chinese belief, um, I don't actually think I want to be that type of woman. And that's okay. <laughs> the culture was still very much a part of her life, very much a part of her mindset, very much impacted how she lived and the way she lived. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be the stereotype, if that makes sense. All right. The next thing is make sure, as I mentioned before, how that you know how their beliefs change their living style. Is there something having to do with food? Is there something having to do with clothing? Um, is it something having to do with the way they talk? Um, how, and then how does it change how society views them? If they're growing up in America, how does that change it versus the UK versus Canada? Those are all gonna be drastically different changes. For example, if someone grew up speaking French, and then move to Canada, that's gonna be no big deal. Whereas if someone grew up speaking French and then moved to America, almost no one speaks, speaks French in America. So that's gonna be a big culture shock and it's gonna have society view them differently. All right, next thing, um, make sure that you don't write from another culture in such a way that it feels like your ethnicity is just stuck in another ethnic body. So whether you're um, Latino or whether you're, um, or I should say Latinx, <laughs> if, whether you're Latin uh, descended or whether you're white or whether you're, uh, whether you're Caucasian, whether you're, I should say Caucasian because white is so general, um, <laughs> whether you're Caucasian or African American, um, it's going to change the way that you look at things. So you have to be careful that your characters feel authentic and true to the culture. Um, and that they're not just your culture stuck in another ethnicity's body. So if, for example, and this can happen with white characters too. 
Um, I've seen a lot of white characters where I've read them and I'm going, this, I can tell that the person who wrote this was not Caucasian because I can just see the cultural difference in the way that they're portrayed. Um, like I, there was this one book that I read where they were trying to portray a Christian Caucasian male and everything about him just screamed that is not the culture that this um, author was born into and that they were clearly trying to write their culture into a white kid. Um, and <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that for a first time writer, but if you want to get your work published, you definitely want to make sure that you write true to the ethnicity that you are writing about, even if it's not yours. Make sure that you do your best, like I said, to be a researcher, be a cult cultural appreciator, not appropriator, and make sure that you're constantly seeking to write from their point of view authentically as you can, considering the fact that you can't write it authentically because you are not part of that culture. And that's okay. That's okay that you're not a part of that culture, but make sure that you're doing it justice. Make sure that you're doing what you can to make sure that it doesn't feel like you're just writing your culture into someone else's culture. Last thing that I wanna say that is super important, make sure that you get a sensitivity reader from that culture when you are finished. If you are writing about a Chinese woman, make sure that you have a Chinese woman read it. If you are writing um, from the point of view of a Latino male, make sure you have a Latino male read it. Um, and make sure that they feel like this makes sense and that it is properly portrayed and that there's nothing um, offensive or insensitive or stereotypical about the way you've portrayed their culture. That's very important. Um, and same thing goes for LGBTQ. If you have an LGBTQ character, that is a whole culture in and of itself now. Um, so make sure that if you have a trans character or if you have a bisexual character or a gay character that you find someone who is of that um, sexuality and representation and that they can read it and feel like they can see themselves in it instead of just writing someone of a different sexuality into a body that doesn't fit, if that makes sense. Kind of similar to the writing an ethnic person in a different ethnicity than you actually are and it feels awkward. This often happens especially with um, people who don't bother doing research. So make sure you do your research, that'll help, but it's always important to have a sensitivity reader to make absolutely certain that you didn't make any pitfalls on total accident just because of lack of understanding. All right, thank you so much and I hope that you all have a lovely day. I look forward to seeing the entries for the February writing contest. That'll be due on February 29th, um, so you still have some time. Thanks, bye.